going to be doing something a bit different this week. Uh, we're going to be finally telling in full the story of Siege Studios, how James started this absolutely massive company uh, that has become now in his little flat above a above a chemist, I believe. So James has sort of gone into this on other podcasts and it's been spoken about before sort of in the, in the lexicarnum of Siege, but we're finally going to go through the full story. Uh, James is going to be opening up about a bit more about his personal life and how how the business was built around him. And uh, we're also going to be telling our story of when we joined the company, where things were at. Uh, so it's going to be a really interesting episode and I hope you enjoy this one. Before we get started with today's episode, we wanted to let you know that we now have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studio shop. Whether you're wanting to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character you're painting, you need a new airbrush, painting accessories, or want to book a class, you'll find what you need. We also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Right, Mr. James Otero, you're on the spot this week. I'm under pressure. Yeah, we want to know the story. So we want you to tell in, in full, basically. Let's uh, let's dial it all the way back to the beginning 10 years ago. We haven't got like five hours. So <laughs> well, everyone's been asking for a longer episode, so yeah. this might be the one. Right, true. okay, true. Uh, yeah, so uh, it all started in uh, a little flat above a chemist, as you quite rightly pointed out. Um, so I had a huge break, as everyone knows, and probably everyone does have, and uh, came back to Warhammer. Started putting videos on YouTube and, uh, and, and yeah, like I basically found out about commission painting through that and, uh, and then decided that I wanted to, 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 to start something, um, working in recruitment for many years as I had did, I think it was 11 or so years uh, off and on around music and stuff. Um, I just didn't see a professional side to it that I was used to so much in my, in my day to day job. Uh, and I wanted to kind of like create a very professional run business that delivered really high end commission painting as well. So that was kind of like my sort of like ethos was starting it. Um, I literally, fun fact, I literally made the siege logo on Photoshop in about five minutes before leaving one of my earlier jobs. And that was, that was quite, uh, so yeah, so I literally knew what I wanted it to look like, knew that, you know, um, obviously for my music background, I live a certain lifestyle choice and like the, the, the letter X is involved in it quite a lot. So I wanted the brushes crossed and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of like where, where you could, you could probably elaborate more on that. Cause yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm straight edge. I've been straight edge for like 20 plus years nearly, um, which is like a hardcore music, like a subculture. Um, it's not cult or anything don't worry there's yeah. no i feel like, like there's a lot of crossover there's a lot of yeah. people into hardcore and punk yeah. so, and so, stuff that are into warhammer yeah well. true that is very true like and tattoos and stuff as well so so yeah so so being straight edge i, I wanted i obviously i wanted that kind of like i wanted like an x involved in it somehow so so the cross brushes kind of like was how i had done that and then i wanted uh, like marketing and logos and branding was something that i really was uh, really interested in from music and from bands and so i wanted the double s to be sort of like one s but have two so that's kind of like where i found the like the it's, i think it's a pretty like, stereo, the, like the gothic gothic sort of like font, font yeah. kind of thing and it's obviously fit in um but fun fact like the so the name like the name as well i didn't even get to explain about that but the name basically i one of the bands i used to be in was assigned to a band called siege of amida records and I, I really liked the word siege. I thought it was very fitting for like 40k and Warhammer. Um, so, so Jamie, if you are watching this, I did nick the first name from, <laughs> from, from Siege and me. I'm so sorry. Jamie's probably not watching this, but if he does, then yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's where kind of like where Siege came from. And obviously, I wanted to build something that was bigger than just me and a flat above a chemist, which is why I called it studio. So, and I thought it was a really good play on words and the double S just works and everything. So that's kind of like why... Um, the name came about and then the logo came about um and then yeah from there it was just uh it was just quite a few years of of, of around the full-time recruitment job um like working siege as a side hustle and just as this extra thing that i was doing um and building building the 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 the, the instagram and building all of those uh social aspects uh, with it as i was doing commissions um was that with the idea like when you started it off because obviously there was a bit of overlap with your recruitment job. Was was building Siege on the side, was the plan always to to eventually pursue that fully or was it just sort of this thing that you enjoy doing on the side? I think at first it was always supposed to be a side thing, but because of just how I was in music with bands and like running the band and managing the band and all that kind of stuff and, and like I did want it to grow into something bigger and I suppose there were... I, there, it would have been a dream back then for it to be where it is today or you know even half of where it is today it would have been a dream back then um but 
I suppose there was a little bit of I do want it to get to that point in 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 the in the future, you know, um, at that point. But you, you know, I wasn't sure if it would even be viable or if it'd be possible. I do then. I do wonder if as well, like, because obviously George, you only started painting a few years ago, so it's a big difference as we spoke about on a few different things. The difference in the the industry and yeah. the community even from two years ago compared to when you started the company. So I do yeah, wonder yeah. if it would have even entered your mind that it would have been possible for this to be a full big company at that point because it didn't really seem like yeah. a thing that would be doable. Now, as like, loads of people are doing, it, it, commission painting in general is, is a bigger thing. It's so a bigger it's thing, a bit yeah. more popular but and a bit I'd more... Argue, I'd argue that Siege kind of paved the way for that, really, because, I mean, I, the, I'm obviously more into this more recently and Siege have been around for a long time since then, but it was kind of like... The way I the way I saw it from the outside looking in, it was like kind of one of the very very few companies doing it at the very least. But because companies like yours existed, that gave people like me the opportunity to be like, oh, other people are doing this, I could do it too. Yeah, I mean, like that. I, again, I'm not going to steal anyone else's thunder. Like we Siege, as much as obviously I, I want Siege to be known as the company that it is and for us to be the market leader. Um, uh, there were other companies around before Siege and undoubtedly there'll be other companies that arise after us. But I think one of the things that really was fundamental for me back in the day was, and again, it's 10 years. So it's a lot, the industry is, I always say is the industry has massively changed over the last, uh, over the last 10 years. Like from when I started it, you had Dave and Matt at MWG basically with handheld cameras, putting YouTube videos up, you know, like compared to now where it's fully edited, fully like almost like, uh, TV show style editing and professional uh, podcasts, podcasts, all sorts, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Everyone's jumping on the bandwagon, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, it, yeah, so it, it, th there were other individuals around doing it, and other organisations doing it, but they were not, in my mind, ran. And again, I'll say this, I'll try and say this as respectfully as possible, but they weren't run the way that I wanted a business to be portrayed, doing it as a professional service and as a trade. Um, it just wasn't done that way. So, so yeah, so it, it kind of, it naturally grew um, and and it got to the point whereby it was taken up. I mean, I was working a 60 hour working week in recruitment. It was taken up a sizable amount of time around that. Like I've, I've been used to not having proper weekends for a very, very long time. Um, and it, it does have a lot of an impact on your life. You know, uh, it, it really does like uh 37 in a couple of in a week or so and 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 i've still not got kids and and you know and a lot of my friends from school were married with about four kids and 15 animals you know what i mean so it's like it's 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 been a very um it's been challenging as well just from a personal perspective because there and i don't want to pull the sympathy card but there have been sacrifices that have been made like i've i you know i had several relationships that failed as a result of, of work working as much as i did um but I've always thought of the long term picture. I've never thought of like the next week or the week afterwards. It's always about, you know, where all this hard work will eventually get you. It shouldn't be about, well, if I just do this now, this will make this better for a week or so. It's about seeing the growth and having the, being able to have the vision and, the, and, the, and, and being able to just not give up because you see where it's going to go or you hope it's going to get to where you want it to go. Um, now, the, the, they, they got to a point in recruitment where I was doing very well in recruitment. I worked really, really hard in recruitment as I do with anything that I've ever done. And um, and I was due an end of year bonus that was supposed to be helping. Well, it, my, my mortgage was based off of that end of year bonus. I knew what I was what doing every month. And for anyone who doesn't know recruitment industry, you're targeted every single month on a certain amount of money to bring in. And for, I think it was nine or nine or eight of the months of that year, I'd hit my target for every month. So I knew even at that point what I should be theoretically getting at the end of the year for my bonus to then basically be able to uh, pr prove to my mortgage provider at the time that I could get the, get the, get the house I was trying to get. And, um, and for some unknown reason, the, the owners of that business then changed the whole entire commission structure. So what I actually equated to is that my, my bonus that I was supposed to be getting would have been like a third of what I was due. Uh, and obviously, look, I lost my mortgage as a result of that. Um, so it, I've always tried to be as fair as possible with anyone I work with or with people that work for the company or whatever. And, and like uh, that for me was just like a, a red line that I wasn't happy to, to continue having crossed so i just quit on the spot uh i didn't take much holiday anyway so i had 30 days or so holiday and i think i worked it out that i had enough holiday and, and and yeah i just i knew how much siege was doing around this 60 hour working week in recruitment and i just thought right well you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna 
give that, finish that, and then do recruit, uh, do do obviously siege full time, and that, that's kind of where the jump happened. And it really happened like it's kind of like maybe you think about two. I've been, it's difficult to factually remember just because it's been so long now, but I think it was around about two or three, maybe three or four years into Siege is when I I, I made the jump. Um, and at that point, we st- we still doing it on your own at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Joe joined in 2019, so uh, it, it, it would have been six six and a bit years. So that, that's the office side of the, the stuff. So obviously stuff. you did have freelance painters. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, yeah, no. So as in- how, long, how long were you, just to, to get a bit of a time, time scale on things, so you, how long were you the only one painting? Was that not very long? Did you get people in pretty quick? I got quick? Pretty in, people in pretty quick. I think it was around about a year or so into Siege that I, I had my first sort of freelance team members working for the company a year or so. And, it and obviously you're still at the recruitment at that point. I'm still well. at recruitment at that point as well, yeah. So like all my lunch breaks on uh, recruitment was like taking parcels down the post office. Like, you know. Um, you <laughs> I know, thought you were uh, going to say painting. I thought you no, brought no. in a little like carry <laughs> case into no, work. I was doing emails. So I literally, my lunch at recruitment would be like, you know, I'd, I'd make, make lunch in the morning before work and then I'd just work through my lunch doing it siege emails on my lunch and then just jump back straight to doing recruitment work at the same desk you know so um so yeah so i i literally just yeah that's what i done and um yeah and i was just at lunch breaks was taking parcels down the post office and, and you know i did that for about i said like two or three maybe three or four years i think it was i yeah. can't remember exactly. so it was yeah so it was about around four years where you were still working and doing this as a yeah yeah and, and i think that's one of the things i think it's being able to have the vision of like where and then the perseverance to 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 just do the slog, which it, and it's and a guy I always say this is very similar to bands, and you you know obviously I know you both have music sort of side of things, but like it's very similar to like bands, like you know when you first start a band, you play to the your local you know your local venue to the village goat and your best mate, you know, and then and then like, <laughs> oh you had the village goat turn yeah, up, did you? I never had that. Time, yeah, absolute yeah. result, yeah. gutted. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, he was the, definitely bought merch every time. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, but uh, but you know, and then and then as you play more and you start playing more, you you end up you know getting a bit more of a following, and then you play like a town that's a little bit further away. Then, then you play with a band that's there, and then you go, oh, why don't we come play a show with us? And blah blah. blah. And then, so that you, you know, the same way, it be, building a band and building music is very similar to kind of like the process of building a business, because inherently a band is a business, and, and like Tides and post, well, maybe not so much post mortem, but Tides very much was run more businessy. So, so, um, so it, 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 I all that graft and all of that perseverance kind of was already established in me from being in bands because i was like well i know that if i do this then this is going to happen and if i do if that happens and this is going to happen and if we do this then this is going to happen so like that, that kind of was already put in place and you know um and uh yeah so four years in obviously i just quit i quit recruitment and um you know and, and i've said this before in various conversations i've had but on the day that i left my recruitment director uh like kind of like laughed it off that I was leaving and uh, then on the, the subsequent team meeting on the next Monday because I left on a Friday he like in front of the whole entire rest of the office because I had friends obviously that will still work there he was like oh yeah James has gone off to paint to a soldiers for a living and all this kind of stuff and I was like and that kind of like it actually helped me hugely because it was like number one they think I'm going to rock up in a week's time and go can I have my job back and that that definitely was not going ever going to be the case and secondly, like it kind of every time there was a little achievement or a little bit of growth or something happened or a big job booked in or we got a new client or, or we've done a commercial project or like when we started working with various uh, uh, YouTube channels that we started working with, all those little things that then started creating the creating the the the, the, the help for the growth of the business. Every single time that, that some of those things happened, it made me think, well, look, you know, everything that, that person has said as as hugely that that's a testament to the fact that that is never going to be the case, you know, and uh and that, that really helped helped me hugely, you know. So 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 yeah. So I got to a point, obviously. And then uh, I think the ne- next biggest kind of thing was like you know getting out of the. the uh, I moved from the flat above the chemist, which is where the first couple of years of siege was. The uh, famous, the same. famous, the famous flat above the chemist. Um, and then I moved into a flat round the corner, which was a bit bigger. And then my essentially my whole entire front room became kind of like the storeroom essentially. So my living room was literally a storeroom for quite some time. Um, uh, and then about three to four years in, I think only I was still in that flat that was, that was around the corner from the other first flat, but then three or four years in, I, I, my front room was, I, I honestly, it was horrendous. There was like just boxes and models and miniatures everywhere and like, like desk here. God, imagine make. that. It was, it was, yeah, it was <laughs> so yeah. different now. Yeah. Now you're in an office with, yeah. uh, boxes and models and miniatures everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then we, and then we, and then I first, I got the first room at the office and the building that we're in now. 
uh, on the first on the on the top floor and uh and yeah that was really helpful for me because like it actually gave me the opportunity to I say well it didn't because I still worked when I was at home but it gave me an opportunity to separate work from home, home. to an extent because I'd still be doing emails at home as well as like I'd I'd walk home from 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 I'd walk home from the office it took me like five ten minutes to get back to my flat and by the time I walked home, someone would have replied and I'd have my laptop on me and I'm like, oh, I'll just do that now. You know, like, so it, it didn't really ever stop. Like it never really stopped. Like, you know, um, and yeah. And then, and then, yeah, with the, the office, I obviously had that first room. Everything was in there. Um, I don't remember if I had the other room when you joined. I don't know if I did or not. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll I can't remember you that. Did, you, you had just, you had just got the second room when right, I, okay, when I, yeah. So yeah, so then, the so then for about two years or so, it was one room in the in the office building that we're in now, and me working from home from as well. So I was doing like a I was stopping going work, in during the going day, in then. during the day, coming home, cooking and eating dinner, and then my own, and then and then just working in the evening as well. So that you went from having a side hustle to a, a different job. Yeah. So then you 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 still treated it like a side hustle when it was a real job. Yeah. It's like a side hustle yeah. for your company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, you, yeah. you were side yeah. hustling the same job that you were working throughout the day. Yeah, I think what I, I'm like, I think personally, I, I am very stubborn and very relentless, and and you know, and and I will, I won't give up. Like that's one of the things. Like I just, I, 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 yeah, I've always, when I have clear vision on where where how I want it to go or things, I, I always try and always try and achieve that. I think, I think that's really important when it comes to, when it comes to business in general, like, um, you know, and if you want to, you, you know, things just don't happen by clicking your fingers, you know, you do have to put the graft in, you do have to put the work in. And I think, um, I think sometimes that's often forgotten how much actually goes into doing stuff. Like there's that famous iceberg picture where you see the top bit, which is like the bit that everybody looks up to and whatever. Mm. And then beneath that, you see all this, all this other stuff that's led to that bit above the way. I think that's a know. commonality with a lot of things that people see as like a, an enjoyable job, which obviously it is. We yeah. all love this thing. But yeah. everything has, every, everything still work at the end of the day. Like wh whatever you love in your life, if you make that your passion and your business, yeah, there's always going to be the work side of that. Because yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people outside looking in would be like, oh, you just paint toy soldiers all day. Yeah, yeah. But it's not that simple. No, it's not. It really isn't. And, and I said like at that point, like sort of like five, six years in, like I, I, I was slowly coming off of the tools, which for anyone who knows me well enough knows that that's still very hard for me to do because I actually do enjoy the day to day. I like, I want to be involved in everything and I do want to genuinely do it just to help not to be like this crazy sort of like oppressive kind of like, are you doing it right? Like I just, I, I genuinely, I love every aspect of the business so much that, you know, uh, and because I've done everything in the business, maybe not to where it's at now as in like the stuff that maybe you do Georgia media or that you do in ops now, Joe, but like the stuff that I, I obviously done in the early days that I don't do now, but it has changed so much, but it's like, it's like, I still want to have an inherent understanding of how it's done so that I'm not that owner of a business that's like, doesn't understand what goes on. I think that's really important. Well, I think especially with the painting side of it, you might not be painting commissions, uh, no. people anymore, but you do kind of, uh, we do fight every time that you want to do a, a preview model because yeah, you, you obviously do really still want to, it's hard. It's a hard um, job. Every time we get like a Games Workshop preview model or something like that, yeah. it, you you really still want to contribute to the the painting side of the business. So yeah. I think you are. It's nice that you're still, even though you're obviously way too busy to be doing commissions and actually painting the commissions anymore. Yeah, yeah. But it is nice that you still have this like every now and then there is something to do with painting that you can do for the well, company. It's proof yeah. that you kind of never burnt yourself out in it, right? Because like yeah. even doing it after 10 years, you still want to be on the brush. Of your I do, yeah. I, I genuinely do because I find painting way more stress stress relieving than, than uh, the day-to-day, -day, believe it or not. Well, it's obvious. The day-to-day -day is obviously way more stressful than the, than the natural painting sometimes of the projects like that. Like Even if it's a model that maybe I don't really like that much, I still think just getting the chance to zone out and paint the model would would be sometimes like something that is a little bit less stressful for me than maybe dealing with a certain situation or having to try and sort a certain thing or do a certain thing, you know. Um, but but at the same time, like, yeah, I do. I never really got burnt out from it because I, I do I do massively enjoy what we do as a company. And I, I'm not saying that maybe certain aspects, of the, there is always going to be stuff that's like not as fun as other stuff. That's just inherent with any role or any, any job. But But it is something that, I still massively enjoy all aspects of the company. Like, you know, if, if, uh, maybe like Paul and packing is off, I'm, I don't mind going and packing a model, making sure it's perfectly packed so that it goes out and it doesn't get damaged and all that stuff. Um, you know, um, and all that kind of stuff. I still enjoy doing those things, but I know that that's not 
where I'm best placed now and what what I should be doing, if that makes sense. Like, you know, it's it's very it's believe it or not, that's one of the hardest things is take it's taking your hand off off of stuff is 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 the hardest thing when you spend so long getting it to that point. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your miniatures painted by the world class team here at Siege Studios. We have a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and your budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or a full-blown gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard in terms of painting quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of July, new clients can get 5% off of any commission using code JULY5. So then like five, six years into uh, into like just the, the, the day-to-day of Siege, it got literally so busy that like I, I was struggling to do on all the administration and stuff. Um, all of the like the AM or artist management, all of the spec writing, all of the client management, all of the meetings, and sh- discussions with clients, all that kind of stuff. I got so busy that I needed help, and like it's a real, the real difficult position, and real like uh, real sort of like where I come from recruitment. Obviously, I'm used to recruiting people, but then like it's not like I'm recruiting it for just a company that I'm working with and finding a role and trying to fill their role. It's literally like I've got to write the job spec for my own role, for my own business. I've got to make, make all the duties. I've got to make sure that the person comes on board and knows what they've got to do. And, you know, and like, you know, it's very different when it's your own thing. It's not like, especially as a recruitment consultant, you just find the right person, match the skills, interview them, blah, blah. How many, how many artists did you have working for you by, oh, by that time? I can't, I, 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 when I, I joined, I would think it was probably around maybe 20, 20, 20 when I so, joined, 20. there was around, 25, 25 freelance yeah. artists. So you've got you've got yeah. 20 artists working for you, and you finally go, okay, I need some help running this. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I'm. Now you, you you kind of getting onto the wavelength of when I walked in, how I was <laughs> yeah. thinking. Yeah, well, let's 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 tell that story. So, then. so so yeah, so like so, 20 25 artists. I think it was more 25 to be fair. Um, and and yeah, like I. Yeah, like working ten, because of being in recruitment, working like 10, 12 hour days didn't really bother me too much. Like I was actually. I, 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 that didn't bother me. You know, I'd be cooking dinner and on the phone to a candidate if, when I was, and then I'd be doing emails for Siege. It didn't really bother me. Like, I just, yeah, like. I um, <laughs> love the idea that in that moment you're doing it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was. I literally, I was literally like emailing and on the phone to kind of prepping someone for an interview the next day and cooking my cooking my dinner. So, yeah, like, you know, it's, that was that was very common on a, on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. Um, so uh, Wild Friday night. Yeah, I know. Is... Yeah, I didn't have much. I didn't party much, obviously. Being straight, <laughs> being straight edge of dome. So, yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, but, um, and then, yeah, so it got so busy that I need help and I put up like a admin assistant, uh, role like advert and I got a few applications, but then I got a random text message on, on, the, on my phone. <laughs> like, like, well, uh, you, I... you, like you had my number still. So just as a quick caveat, like so Joe, I've known Joe for a very long time. So back in music when I was in bands and, and like we, we were all part of the same sort of music scene, like going to like punk and hardcore shows and like metal shows in the sort of like South End, uh, South End kind of like Chelmsford, like, uh, I'm sure there was like quite, yeah, there's quite there was a, a lot of London, London stuff, London even going out well. to Kent and to, it was to all Kent, the kind of yeah. South. Yeah, um, and then I got a random text like, "Oh hi, like, hi James." It's like it's like Joe Hart from like when we went to shows and stuff, blah blah. blah. <laughs> like uh, I see you've got like a like an admin role, and like um, I've 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 applied for it, and I was like, I actually remember where I was. I was sitting I was sitting on my sofa at home in my flat, and I got the text through, and I was just like, "It's like God, that's a small world." <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> so just to clarify as well, like um, the way I actually had your number was not because of how we used to know each other and stuff like that. I'm sure I probably did have your number for one reason or another to do with bands and things back then, but it wasn't. It was because once I got back into Warhammer, yeah, yeah. one of the first things I got told when I got back into Warhammer was like, do you know what, have you seen what James is doing now? Go on, you can say what people used to call and me. And I was like, have you seen what Jim's doing yeah. now? <laughs> seen what Camo Jim's doing now? <laughs> and... um Camo Jim, he used to wear a lot of camo. There's a there's a there's a story. That's for another episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, seeing what camo Jim's Jim's doing now, and I was like, I was like, oh no. And then uh, someone linked me to the Seeds YouTube channel. Yeah, right? yeah. And by this point, I don't know what year we're talking here, but um, yeah, I can't think. So then I, I I was like, oh my god, that's 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 crazy. Started watching the videos and stuff like that, like watching the commission updates and things that you were doing back then. We're probably talking like 2017 or something at this yeah, point. The old iPhone 5 videos. Yep. Um, and uh, eventually, I, I, you know, I started painting a little bit casually again, started playing games and stuff. And I and I didn't have you on like social media or anything like that. Yeah. I kind of lost touch a little. Were you, were you two both into Warhammer when you were in the bands? No. Um, 
we probably well we obviously had been but had never spoken about so you, it. So this was like just on complete parallel paths. Yeah, we also weren't we weren't in bands together. No, no, but you thought in the same. We used yeah, to go yeah. to a lot of shows that had the, like uh, it was a similar same group of friends, it was wasn't it? Group of friends. Obviously, there's a bit of an age difference between me and Joe, but like you had your group of friends that that were into had bands and they were, and then yeah. you know, I was in certain bands and it was kind of we were just like yeah it, it, everyone got to know each other and and would play the same shows and stuff like that. But yeah, obviously I had been into Warhammer at that point. I wasn't in it into it currently and you had been at some yeah. point at that point but wasn't currently but it never once was mentioned also that's another thing where it's changed where like i feel like you, it is kind of oh, it cool is. to just talk I'd, about i probably imagine that at that time period being in that sort of scene warhammer yeah. was very hush hush yeah, yeah like i imagine there was a lot of people who were into it who weren't talking yeah. about well, it. well obviously there were because now we know after all these years yeah, I was like, yeah. oh yeah i was really into warhammer yeah. it's like why didn't you say that at the <laughs> yeah. time it comes out the woodwork when it's <laughs> yeah. cool yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. so anyway so um i actually ended up booking onto a siege course yeah, you did actually, and um, make it, it was going to be a lo local one. It wasn't that I couldn't make it; it was that it ended up getting postponed because of the venue. That was it. Yeah. So yeah. you had my number because I booked a ticket for the course, and you called me to tell me that right. it had unfortunately been postponed, and um, I ended up having to get a refund. I couldn't make the next date, whatever. So I yeah, still yeah. had your number, number. Um, in my phone. So, so I wonder I thought, at that point if I called you, if I knew that it was you, maybe I didn't. I don't, because um, I, I like. I think I might have said, like, once I bought a ticket, I think I emailed in and was like, oh, like, it's, Maybe, it's Joe, yeah, you know, I used to... I'll dive through the emails and see if we can find it. So you're on the sofa, Joe texts you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, well, I actually remember, sorry, I remember where I was when I sent that text <laughs> as well. So the parallels with these, the differences of these are a bit different because I wasn't just chilling on my sofa. I was doing freelance, like, event work. That was it, yeah. At the you're thing. Saying, so, yeah. like, I used to do, like... Um, it was all sorts of different stuff. But you know when you go to like a wedding and they have like the big letters with like lights on them and stuff like that. I used to help with a, um, a company that would just take them to the wedding and set them up and make sure and then take them back. Or like there was photo booths and there was all this other stuff. And I was like lugging all this like heavy gear about. I used to do it, in, it literally in my Fiesta. Not much of a change from the musician life. Then, is exactly. It? <laughs> it was exactly the same. If, if you didn't see what was in the bags, it literally looked like I was going to a gig to set up. Like, But it was a bit heavier, some of it. And because um, I only used to have a little tiny terror, so that was quite easy. Yeah, you didn't live the bags. drummer life. Yeah, 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 I wasn't the drummer. Um, so I was literally, and, and to be fair, like, was absolutely fine with that. Like the people that I was working with and everything were great. And, and I did love that. But it was obviously a little bit difficult physically to be like yeah, yeah. especially in summer and stuff and uh i remember a friend of mine reese who yeah, you, you know reese, yeah. put in our little warhammer whatsapp group like put the job advert in there that was it yeah and i literally text you as soon as i saw it and i was on a job loading in like yeah knackered like i was just like i need to try and do something else <laughs> yeah. um and um I text you then, and what I, I hadn't actually applied yet, but I was just texting you to say I'm gonna apply. Like, that please was it. don't. Yeah, yeah, you did. Please, yeah. I'm gonna like I'm out at the minute. I'm gonna apply. Please, like don't don't pull it yet. Like I'm gonna reply apply when yeah, I'm yeah. home. Um, and I yeah, I remember. I that. think did I, I just to check my own my own. I'm gonna vet myself here, but did, did I ask you for a CV? I did, mm. didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, so. yeah, you asked me for a CV. Thank God. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, thought, but, I thought I was yeah, gonna go. Oh, I did the full. I, yeah, I didn't get did any like. Shebang. I think we even spoke about when I when I because I you, obviously you gave me an interview and uh, we spoke about on our interview that you know we knew each other, but it had been a while since we'd probably yeah, yeah. spoken and and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was like probably about. 18 or 19 or something the last time you'd actually seen me yeah, yeah. maybe 18 or something like that so been quite a while um so it had been a while and and obviously for all you know i could have been a completely different person by the time i was 26 or whatever whenever i was when you hired me so yeah, yeah so we, we did discuss that and talk about that and i still did the full process and everything i didn't get any didn't get any handouts before anyone wants to start <laughs> saying that um but yeah that that was like so that um i Obviously, eventually got the job, and then I didn't, I didn't wait around that long, Joe. I mean, come on, let's be honest. No, 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 no. I, I just meant, well, <laughs> well, I was actually making sound like I had about fifty people queuing up. Like, well, like, the I, funny... had a, I had a few applications, <laughs> but like, oh, it wasn't like it wasn't like we were waiting like six months. Well, that, I knew you had other people to yeah. interview and stuff like that, and I think I yeah, I, I got all the normal treatment of yeah. like 
well, we've got a few more people to interview, so we'll see how it goes and stuff like that. And I got all that. So I was like, okay, yeah, fine. And I, I was like hopeful because yeah. I felt like the interview went well no, and everything and we got on and that. So I was like, I, I was pretty hopeful. But my worry was that like someone else who'd apply, I know we have some gaming shops around and someone else that probably maybe already in the industry and was like yeah, a yeah. bit more clued up on it. Um, but got- anyway, so so I ended up getting it. And the uh, when I got the, t- when I got the, t- Cool to say that I got the job. I was on a freelance job. I was doing. I was a um, being a runner on an advert. Um, it was like a two day shoot, like fourteen hour days. I was the only runner with a car, so I was like all over the place. And uh, I got it on like the lunch break that I got the job, and I was like literally. I was like so over the moon and I was like telling people about it and because it was called Seed Studios they all thought I'd been hired by like a production company <laughs> <laughs> and I was just I didn't correct her. I was just like yeah yeah I can't even be bothered to explain what Seed Studios is no actually. no no like, Warhammer <laughs> yeah, yeah be honest no, no 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 Toy Soldiers yeah no yeah, yeah I didn't even correct yeah. her to be honest yeah but then so that's what that's 2019 yeah. May, May you've got to dial it back though because you've left out that first moment when you came in for the interview when you came oh, up when you came yeah, up well, yeah, you, yeah so I obviously assumed that Siege was a certain size operation as because of as big as it was when I walked in for my interview. Yeah, yeah. And well, like James said, 20, 25 artists. Exactly, it's 25 yeah. artists. Like, I'm, I'm watching the YouTube videos. I know what's being churned out. I know, and you know, I have some business uh, acumen as well, so I can reverse engineer how much work must be going into that if you're getting that many jobs in and being paid. Must be like five, six people in an office. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There's obviously like an office assistant dealing with all the emails because James... Sorry, James isn't doing all Surely the he's emails. not sat there on the phone with his laptop in front of him. <laughs> Making his dinner. Making his dinner. <laughs> I didn't make dinner in the office, just to be sure. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and yeah, I walked in and it was obviously just James. And and there was two, we had two office rooms by then. Oh yeah, there was two, there two was rooms. There was two yeah. desks. Two, two desks and the two um, rooms, yeah. And there was uh, two office rooms by then. And one of them was just being used as a storeroom and obviously where you filmed the old school videos. Yeah. Um, and the other one was obviously just main office with office stuff. And I was just kind of like, where's everyone else like is is do you have like downstairs as well and he was like oh no it's just me like you're the first one in and i was like what how's that what do you mean like what what actually goes up what do you do and he was like oh yeah i do it all and i was like how like i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand so then we that was like instantly a bit of a shock yeah. like in a good way like it wasn't like i was walking in thinking oh yeah i'm going into a huge company and then oh it's only one guy i actually for me that was like wow like all this is being done by one guy um and it obviously it also made me realize that there would obviously be work for me to do the last thing i wanted to do was like just sit there and yeah be bored at my desk and, and stuff like that and that, that's the other interesting thing is that i was hired as a part-time office assistant yeah at first so at i first, actually yeah. worked worked two days a week two days yeah it was yeah um yeah and i would just so i carried on doing my freelance stuff so i was doing like two days a week in the office, just answering emails and stuff. And then literally, I don't think either of us could have guessed how quick it would ramp up. No, like, it went, I mean, so just to give you a bit of an idea, like I think when you first started, there were 25 painters and we had a way on just, so it was just seeds back then. I think we only had like on our workbook, which has obviously a lot of the projects that we're working on. I think we only had like 40, 50 projects on it and the waiting list at that point. Um, only, only. <laughs> yeah. Which, which, I, well, yeah, compared, grass, to, now, compared to now, that is now, only. That's obviously, that's <laughs> that'd only, be a lot easier to yeah, manage. Compared to well, that, now, that's it's, the it's... funny side of it is that back then it was like you were getting me in because it was like it, it finally. Well, got I was to like, the point I was where... like, oh my god, like what am I going to do? Like I got this, I got this, I do got this, yeah. I got all this. And if I look like, back like, now, uh, and if it was like that now, yeah. that would be the easiest Monday that I've had oh, yeah. in the last. I, I, in the last I love three I love years. Mondays back then. I do that. Yeah, like I love Mondays back then. But now it's just Mondays are. Yeah, are I guess it, it ramped up really quickly. Um, we got a few more office staff in, and as you do with a business, as it builds up, you start to sort of fill out the roles. Then you have. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you have COVID happen yeah, um, was, less than a year after I joined. That was hard. Um, yeah. At which point I was like thinking, well, surely a commission painting studio isn't going to survive. survive through COVID. So I was kind of thinking, oh, that, that was fun for around a year, but this is probably going to run its go course the way now. Of the, go the way of the day. Um, and it went the complete opposite way as the entire 
hobby Warhammer painting industry did. So we managed to to stick it out through that, which is about when you when do you join during COVID? Like the tail end, really, because that was like a. I remember, I remember it was like post COVID, but like it was still that was like. The well, weird... I remember you still you still got it while you worked. Well, that for was like us, the weird so Christmas did, yeah. lockdowns and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. it was like I joined in twenty twenty for the twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty for the yeah. painting team. So, so that was the that yeah, was, it was like, in like the COVID, it was in like October. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was I, I know like the worst sort of in the UK anyway. The, the main lockdown was in the sort of March uh, spring sort of time. Yeah, yeah. I was at uni uh, doing doing music. Uh, I started painting like before COVID, obviously, but it was sort of like 2019, around the time you started, I guess. Uh, I just started painting in my in my free time while I was while I was studying, just for something to do. The first lockdown hit right as I was doing my dissertation at university, so my uni didn't have a clue what to do. <laughs> yeah. So they basically shut uh, for for a good month. Uh, the UK was locked down, uh, so I couldn't go to work either. I worked in retail. So I was just uh, just sat on my backside, really, uh, just yeah. in the flat, time. in the flat with a lot of free time. So uh, I, yeah, that put an absolute rocket booster on my, on my painting, and uh, yeah, like a lot of people, I was struggling. So I was like, well, I'm doing all this painting stuff. I guess I could sell the models, uh, and then I saw there was a there was a job opening for Siege on uh, on Instagram. So I, uh, yeah, it's the one the freelance put, artist. Right? It, was so, it was so weird looking back because I, I, I was basically full time painting because uh, that was that was for all, yourself for myself because yeah, yeah. that was all I could do. Uh, for work at the time and uh i applied for siege didn't really think i was i didn't really think i'd get it because i i knew the the prestige that the company had and i didn't i didn't believe in myself enough at that time to think that there was much much opportunity there for me but i did just sort of apply just to make sort of a point of it i was like, i'm going to apply but i don't i don't really think i'm there yet if you don't you'll never know exactly yeah. so that was that and uh i remember where i was when i got that phone call <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I was at home I'd, uh, I think I was sat in the garden like, having a coffee or something and uh, I got a phone call from like a random number and nine times out of ten I'm like random number it's going to be a sales that. call <laughs> it's going to be a call. random sales and call and I don't know why I answered it I think in the back of my because I'd forgotten that I'd even applied because I think it was like probably a couple of weeks after yeah, yeah. and uh, I'd forgotten that I'd even applied but something, something in my room was like no you should answer the phone and uh, yeah, it was James. It, I, I was absolutely elated that he wanted to get me down for just for an interview. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was like absolutely blew my mind at that point. I didn't, I didn't think I had a hope in hell to be honest. But uh, at, at least, at least when you came into the office, there was more than one person. I did. I, yeah. Well, yeah. I had the opposite experience of you, Joe, because yeah. I came down to the office and I was thinking this is going to be like a few guys. And then like James like took me upstairs and like showed me like the packing room, and, like there was all artist painting in there. And then upstairs there was an office like. Oh my god! Oh yeah, we had loads more rooms this by it. the time. You yeah, did. I was yeah. like, this is this is mental. I was I had the complete opposite experience. I was like, oh my god, this could be like, I was like, I'm gonna go down there, be like, a, be quite cool, meeting a couple of people who are into this sort of thing. Yeah. And Joe's walking me around, and I was like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> this, this place is insane. So uh, yeah, I, I sat down, had had a had an interview, uh, which went with, with the both of you, with I both guess. Good, yeah, yeah, both yeah, which, yeah, which went well. Uh, a few days later, yeah, James, James gave me the call to say say that I got a job, and I was like a- almost in tears. It was like that was. For me personally, as a painter, that was like the biggest like seal of approval I I could have hoped for at that point, and that was yeah. like this. Do, do you know what? Like like hearing people say stuff like that, and I know that this is not preloaded and, and you know, or anything at all whatsoever. But like like I never thought that Siege would get to the point where I had people saying sort of stuff like that. Like this is like this thing started in the flat of a chemist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know. So so but, like, uh, for me as an artist, like I mean, I obviously know personal association with you or any of the people from Siege before that, and I was. Like I said, I was sat in this self-doubt of like, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this. Yeah, yeah. I really wanted to make it a job at that point. I was already, like I said, doing it effectively full time. Um, but that was like the biggest seal of approval of like, as a painter, as as an artist, that was like, you are good enough to do this. Yeah. And that was all I could have hoped for. So, yeah. It's like, it's interesting because obviously we, the, the the weight of of how many people are on the team is obviously we have way more freelance yeah. artists than we do office stuff naturally yeah um but i th- so we you know people maybe understand that from the painter's point of view uh more than others but for me like i it kind of has a similar effect just about general business and career stuff i'd never worked in an office before me neither yeah um i thought that i you know i didn't go to uni i didn't go to college i didn't have uh, you know, I had some GCSEs, um, and I knew that I had a kind of decent business brain, and especially with operation stuff, I always felt like processes. That's just sense. how my brain works. Like I can work out what makes sense to do and how the most efficient way to do something is, and stuff like that. 
but I never knew that I had, I, I didn't ever feel like I could showcase that enough to a company to get a job doing it because I didn't go to college, didn't do all this stuff. So I worked in retail, then I was doing all the freelance event stuff and things like that. So once I got in, even on a business level, it's a very similar feeling where I was like, I can't believe I've actually, I'm in a business and now working up the ranks, obviously being operations manager. Now it's like, if you'd have told me when I was 25 and I was thinking, oh, uh, you know, I'm, that's me done. I can't get into a company or anything like that, that I'd end up being the, the operations manager. It's like insane. I, I could, wouldn't have believed it. Same, same for me as well. Cause like, I, I think back to then at how like later I was at like joining the painting team. And then like I said, like you have been working for a few years. So I went my up the ranks and now I'm in, in the office doing media. Yeah. But then it was like, I had the same experience. Like again, again, it's like you know, you know what? this is one of the crazy things. It's like, I, I you know, I think part of that initial thing when I started it was that I wanted, uh, you know, I wanted to give opportunities like this in the business. I think because our industry as well is, is quite far behind in various areas and things. Um, I think it puts us in a very good position to be able to try to sort of like offer that and do the best that we can for people in the industry. And I think that's something that I've always wanted from day one of, of you know, of, from working in recruitment and work, walking into big build, big buildings and big companies and seeing obviously how things are run, but then the culture and the, the way people are isn't the way that I would hope for a company to be run. And, and then seeing those inklings of it happening within Siege is, is just something that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's truly humbling to have that, have that, um, to see that happen and to see the company sort of grow from where it started to, to where it is now and then obviously where I want it to go in the future and for everybody and everything and it's just yeah it's, it's a real it's a real it's been a real crazy ride um that if you look back at where it started you you you, you kick yourself every day going holy cow this thing's never going to be that way and it just it mm. just crazily is you know so so yeah it's it been... kind of hit me at when we were at Warhammer Fest and if like naturally we've all like the the creator because we were there to film stuff and, and do whatever all the creators and everything it was it's all like these huge youtubers that i'd watched for years and um obviously not all of them knew they definitely didn't know who i was because i hadn't even been on camera yet at, at, for siege at this point but just for people to even be like oh like where are you from and then for me to say siege and then know what it was hmm. like was like wild to me like they just be like oh yeah cool like da -da -da -da. and like, most of the time they would have already known you and spoke to you or whatever but Still, just to have that thing where it's like, yeah, it's, it's, oh, I'm I'm here with Siege, and they're like, oh yeah, like, and they actually know a little bit about it. I was just like, that's wild to me. That's crazy. Like, yeah, that it, it does show how, because you get blinded a lot, I think, by the the awareness of the company. I don't think you realize how many people, or at least yeah, in I the am, industry, I, I know of it. I, I am. Yeah, they don't yeah. have to be like fans of it or well into it or follow it or anything. I heard of Siege right at the start that I was painting like years before I even worked here. Like when I first back, got back into Warhammer, I was like, well, yeah, obviously Siege Studio. I mm. think the thing is, is like, I, I, I've, because I'm so focused on where I want it to go, what I want to do, how I want it to improve, you know, and the betterment of the company for everybody. Like I, I don't, I don't want to say it's in the wrong context. I, obviously, it's great that loads of people know about the business and I'm very glad that they, that we've grown and gained, gained reputation that we've got and all those kind of things. But at the same time, at the same time, like, I think sometimes if you do focus on the awareness and on that side of stuff, you lose vision on what you're trying to do yeah, in the business. Yeah. And I think that it's really important to, in my mind, and this is just my opinion, like on focusing on the core part of it and that other part of it complements it, but it should never take away from where where you, where the mindset should be and the vision should be. I think and it's, that, that... it's quite admirable to me because obviously I didn't know you like early on like like Joe did, but seeing that you've still got that much drive for the company like, oh, yeah, day I'm in and day out this yeah. far in yeah. is crazy yeah i'm hungrier than the kid in the sweet shop you know, so. <laughs> i think that also goes to show like why there's not more seed studios is because it's really really hard i'm not to gonna achieve. lie I'm not gonna it's lie. really hard to get at any given point of this company's history there has probably been a multitude of reasons to just stop yeah. and would make things a lot easier and i think even when we get to now like me and you will argue about stuff all the time. And like every time I maybe tell someone about that, I get the same answer from everyone, which is like, how good is that? That like you both care enough about the outcome hmm. that you're kind yeah. of willing to sort of have a bit of an argument with each other. Cause it's never like, it's, never, no, it's not it's malicious not, or anything. Yeah, but that's not. a note that I've noticed though. Cause like being in the office now, I'm exposed to sort of a, a different side of the company. And that was like the most reassuring thing for me 
one of like on my first day in the office was like oh thank god like james is open to like ideas and discussion and it was it, yeah, yeah. but that's so yeah uncommon i think like yeah. in most industries like i know i don't i know it's an overlap of corporate sort of stuff but i did sort not that i assumed it of you necessarily but like you do have this idea that like the ceo sort of sat there and like well it's my company and everyone <laughs> sort of skirts around things and wants to you'd at least think that people would try to present things to you like in hopes that you would agree or whatever but it's yeah. there's such a health like the word is there's such a healthy discussion and debate mm. around things in the business and it's because yeah. like you said everyone has got the same well I, well I think one of the things i just wanted to touch upon that is like like yeah I, I do come from a very corporate background which i think does have a slight overlay within siege and I, and I understand that 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 comes from a recruitment background um but at the same time like because of that recruitment industry i have been in many businesses where there the, the is that culture that you're talking about where it is literally like it's this way or no way and 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 by not being open to ideas and things, I still have to say yes or no at the end of the day. It is my, it is my business. And obviously, I have to make those decisions. But at the same time, like if you don't give people that work for your business the opportunity to invest ideas and things into it to potentially steal the business in a, in, a, in a better direction or to add value to it, whatever, then it doesn't give a little bit of ownership to those people. And there's no, it really diminishes and causes a bit of resentment sometimes. And I think that there's got to be a fine balance between both of those things, definitely. Um, but yeah, by not having that, that ability to sit down and have a conversation, people put stuff into it, put ideas and stuff into it. I think you'll, you'll, you know, those people working for your business and, and, and really the idea is to, to, to try and make the environment as best as possible so that people can feel that they can contribute and be valued as well. Value isn't just about obviously look, money earnings and all that kind of stuff is important, but at the same time, having the ability to invest ideas and things does contribute in a very healthy way to the betterment of the company. So, so yeah, so that's the way that I would, I would, I would, I would sort of like, like to sort of like finish up like it's been it's been a crazy crazy 10 years and there's so much more that i want to do and so much more that i i see for the future of siege um and i'm just super keen and hungry to get it where it want, where i want it to be well uh, i really enjoyed that conversation hopefully you did too uh, we've been really excited to share the uh, the history of siege for quite some time now uh, it's really great to hear uh, james open up about a bit more of his personal story as well there uh, we thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of Plane Perspective. Uh, please do hit the follow button on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts if you are listening over there on the audio. And of course, if you're watching here on YouTube, uh, the video version of the podcast, please subscribe as well. And we look forward to seeing you next week. 